Okay, yeah, so um, yes, I will talk about how to conjecture and prove that the generating function of the young Zagier number is al number is al algebraic. Uh, and so, but I want to al already to mention now, and I will repeat it, that the, this is not somehow not the main message to prove this explicit example, but I want rather to show a method or several methods how to do this in general. Yeah, so I think it's time to start with my first slide. So this is, these are two sequences um, which appeared in a, so I will show you the, this place where they appeared uh, and their origin, uh, but these are the two examples which will lead us along the way uh, through the whole presentation now. Uh, and yeah, all the main motivating examples. So yes, let me tell you the origin of these two sequences. Uh, they uh, appeared in this very won uh, wonderful survey of Don Zagir, uh, the arithmetic topology of differential equations. And there he uh, looked at, uh, at some point, at this uh, ugly looking um, in uh, recurrence uh, with some initial conditions. And let me already now mention that the, the origin of this recurrence comes from physics. So there is a, a paper by Bertolo et al. Uh, where they define the so-called topological ODE. And maybe if I have time in the end, I can also show you a bit more about this origin. But let's now accept that uh, this comes from somewhere. And uh, the problem uh, Zagier describes is uh, very strange at first glance, but uh, also uh, somewhat natural if you investigate it a bit further. So he noticed that uh, these numbers decay like 1 over n factorial squared. Uh, this means they cannot be rational, of course. Uh, they cannot be integers, of course. But uh, the hope is if you normalize them, I mean, if you multiply them with something like factorial squared, in this case, something more general, that the uh, rising uh, factorial here, uh, then you can hope for finding this pair u and v uh, such that this sequence is globally bounded in the sense that there exists an w such that this sequence is an integer sequence. So this is somehow the problem setting. And indeed, Young and Zagier found these numbers an, and uh, Dubrovin and Young found the numbers bn I had on the slide before. These are the main examples I am interested now. So a and uh, are defined like this, where c is this uh, sequence above. And then we, uh, or, uh, they found the two rational numbers, 3 fifth and 4 fifth, and also this uh, denominator normalization factor. So one gets this integer sequence. And uh, also let me say that uh, there is a mystery uh, going on. Uh, with this number. So Zagier writes about an that, as I told you, they, sh uh, they found a formula showing that these are integers of exponential growth. And they hence can be expected to have a generating series that is a period. I will explain this on the next slide. Uh, but they did not uh, succeed in finding it. And bn somehow is very different, uh, as you can read here. So they are also integral. But in this case, the generating function is not only a, a period, but actually algebraic. And this is somehow uh, surprising. Uh, so Zagier <coughs> writes that this is a very mysterious example. And Zudilin, that the in arithmetic intuition is entirely broken in the private communication, that uh, the, the numbers came fr come from a very similar or the same actually sequence, but the one is somehow algebraic and the other is not, what is happening here. And so the problem is to investigate the nature and actually uh, we could prove the following theorem resolving the mystery that actually the gen both generating functions are algebraic. So this is somehow the uh, resolution of the mystery, but now the question is how to uh, conjecture and then how to prove such a result and also how to quantify. And this is the main uh, idea or the main message of my talk. Okay, so here is a bit uh, a slide on the uh, setting, so to say. So this is all very well known. Uh, we have uh, the p recursive and definite class of sequences or functions, respectively. Uh, those are, uh, as we saw before, with the definition of the CN, uh, p recursive sequences are 
linear recurrence sequences, like the CN, uh, with polynomial coefficients, so something like this. And for example, the n factorial, or one over the n factorial sequence, both are uh, p recursive. And as I mentioned already before, or as Zagia writes, part uh, particular uh, definite functions, so, d uh, sorry, let me mention definite is uh, the equivalent notion on the level of generating functions. So a definite a fun a series is called definite if it is a solution of a linear differential equation with polynomial coefficients. And also what I will often do is uh, write it in the form of a different uh, operator like this. Yes, and what I wanted to say is uh, periods uh, are special kinds of definite functions. Um, so the definition is like here, and this is analogous to the definition of a period number, but here a period function. So this is an integral over uh, some algebraic domain of some algebraic or, or <coughs> some rational equivalent of some rational function. And here I have some example. Uh, this is the uh, from Eu uh, uh, very classical formula due to Euler of the uh, perimeter of an ellipse uh, from its el elasticity. Uh, so, and here this example shows us nicely that if you have an algebraic function, we can actually transform it into a rational. Uh, but what I actually wanted uh, here to, to see, uh, say that if we have such an integral, then we can also find a differential equation. So this is what I mean by periods are specific definite functions. And this result is often, or it is due to Grothendieck. So this is attributed to him. Uh, but uh, also the main um, goal or topic, so to say, of creative telescoping, how to find this explicitly given this. Anyway, uh, and algebraic functions are very well known. Those we I did not even define. These are clearly roots of polynomials. And those are specific periods. So this is the problem setting we are in. And yeah, as I mentioned, the theorem is that both generating functions are actually in the orange circle. And also the toy example I will show several times is this one. Okay. Um, yes, and already let me show you now, and I will uh, show you a bit later how to find this. Uh, as we saw, the sequences a n and b n are p recursive, and uh, therefore the generating functions are definite, and we can easily find the two uh, annihilating differential operators and the two differential equations for the generating functions. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I will you how to find those algorithmically and uh, now come let's let me come to the main problem uh, stated uh, more abstract uh, given a definite series uh, how to prove that or disprove that uh, it is algebraic so this is known as Stanley's problem and uh, goes actually to much older times to the 19th century uh, where people investigated this question and the question I, I'm also interested in is actually how to conjecture before proving it, how to conjecture in which case we are. So just almost looking at the differential equation. No, uh, uh, yes, how to know that the solutions will be algebraic. <coughs> and here are, it's a bit a uh, story or a bit uh, connected uh, topics to this question. First, the very naive, or not naive, actually a very uh, useful approach is the guess and proof approach uh, for uh, this problem. And it actually works very nice in practice, and I will show you a bit uh, this. Uh, but, uh, so the idea here is to guess a minimal polynomial and then prove the correctness of the minimal polynomial. This is somehow the first one would try. Uh, and this works actually in practice often, but there is a problem, namely that the algebraic degree of a, a differential equation can, uh, of the solution of a differential equation can be arbitrarily high. Um, what we do have, and this is, as I mentioned, very classical, due to Liouville, is an algorithm for finding rational solutions, and this we will use later. Um, actually, this task is solved in theory. So this is what I also want to emphasize. This is solved by Singer's liminal article in 1979. Uh, and uh, with, uh, so this was for a basis of algebraic solutions here we are interested in a single one, but with an uh, extension from 2014, uh, this question is now completely decidable, or proven to be decidable, but this algorithm is, so the bounds used inside this theoretical algorithm are not practical, so I cannot use this usually. 
Uh, also, let me emphasize on a very uh, recent uh, paper due to Boston Reward and Sarvi, where they have a very efficient way uh, of proving the, or di of, sorry, of disproving algebraicity. This uh, exists already. And these points are the main uh, topics of my presentation today. Is first that there are several tests for justifying or conjecturing algebraicity based on uh, conjectures or numerics. And they work very well in practice and um, uh, yes, uh, but yeah, don't, they do not provide proofs. Uh, and the second thing is that applied differential theory and uh, uh, differential Galois theory uh, is sometimes sufficient for proving algebraicity. And this was uh, somehow the clue for proving uh, the, for uh, working with the generating functions of a n and b n. Okay, so before I go to the last two points I just mentioned, uh, let me uh, briefly uh, say something about the guess and proof approach because I mentioned that it is very practical and uh, very useful in practice. So um, uh, the history is, uh, or some anecdote that was propagated by George Polya, who said that mathematicians, uh, when they do the scientific method, uh, they uh, or usually people guess uh, the structure of a problem and then they try to prove it. Uh, uh, and um, this has become now even more fruitful and very powerful because we can teach a computer actually to do uh, the guessing and also the proving part. So uh, as I mentioned, they allow to find new structures and by find I mean really guess and proof and have simple formulas. Uh, and also it turns out that P recursive sequences and definite functions are somehow the ideal data structure for, for these algorithms. Uh, so we can encode uh, the functions we have uh, by finitely many data and also the uh, uh, closure properties are effective so and also efficient. So this is uh, somehow really a very important point in our case. Uh, yeah, so in Maple there is uh, the package GFUN by Salvi and Zimmerman and also constantly improved since 1992 where guessing is done very uh, is now very easy to do and also very efficient and for the proving step they are uh, in general we use the theory of uh, this uh, non-commutative ring and we can also use the effective properties uh, of the uh, classes we work in. Uh, yes, so uh, now uh, let me go a bit more into detail about the guess and proof. So if we have a sequence uh, u0 until un, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the first step is guessing, uh, is we want to somehow guess a, uh, a recurrence relation for uh, the whole sequence for u n for all n, but we will do it for uh, from the first known terms. And the clue is that finding these polynomials uh, amounts to solving a linear system in the variables uh, defining the polynomials. So this can be uh, done efficiently on the computer. And actually what we can even more use is that this linear system is structured and it comes from hermit padet approximation. So there are very efficient algorithms to do this. And uh, then, uh, if we, uh, here what I want to say is that uh, proving uh, equality of two peer recursive sequences is a decidable process and this is actually very easy to do in practice. So there we have uh, methods and I will show this on the computer in a second. So yes, uh, let me uh, show this for the sequences a n and b n. Uh, I hope you can see this. Is this big enough or should I make it bigger? I ask the last rows, is it okay? Okay, so uh, what I will do now is uh, I, I will find uh, differential equations for the generating functions of a n and b n uh, in two different ways. Maybe one magnitude step bigger? Yes. Uh, like this? Is it? Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so here I define uh, the sequence cn, so nothing uh, interesting like on the first or second slide. 
Um, and uh, so here are the first few terms. And uh, as I told you, the definition of IN and BN is the nth term of the sequence CN multiplied with the Pohammer symbols and also with this uh, factor that uh, kills the small prime numbers in the denominators. So this is AN and BN. And uh, let me show it just for AN for time reasons. Um, yes, so uh, here I define the recursion for the Pohammer symbol. And now, as I mentioned, uh, P recursive sequences admit uh, um, uh, effective closure properties. That is, uh, I can first find uh, a recurrent sequence for uh, CN multiplied with the Pohammer symbol of uh, three and uh, three over five. This is the recurrence here, and uh, then uh, multiply term-wise with the Pohammer of four over five. So this is the second. Uh, sequence, uh, and then finally multiply with uh, this uh, factor here. In short, uh, we find this recurrence relation for uh, an, and this is a proof. So this just gives a recurrence relation for the uh, numbers an, and transforming it into differential equation is one uh, line of code, and it works very fast. So this is uh, just transforming or exploiting the uh, e um, equality of definite functions and P recursive sequences. Uh, and then I can uh, transform the differential equation into a, a differential operator. So what we find is a differential operator of degree uh, of order four, as we see here. Uh, and this is somehow the uh, point where guessing comes into play. Uh, we can actually or I claim there is a differential operator for the sequence of smaller order. And this I will find by guessing. Namely, I first compute 20 terms of the sequence an. This is uh, done in a fraction of a second. This is here. Uh, and then what we do is, using the package chief and I mentioned, uh, we find a differential equation. So we take the list and convert it into a differential equation, satisfied by the generating function of this first 20 terms. So this works again in a fraction of a second. And we obtain this differential equation. And now we already see this of uh, order two. So uh, and the differential operator, of course, as well. So now we have this guess uh, for the differential operator uh, for the uh, sequence an. And uh, now the, way, uh, the question is how to prove that this guess is correct. And uh, for this, we can actually, uh, in this case, uh, it is very simple. Uh, so I just divided here by the uh, leading coefficient. What we do here is we compute uh, the, the GCRD, so the greatest common right divisor of the two operators, and we find the one we guessed. So uh, let me show this. So this is the guessed operator, uh, and this is the GCRD. And because the, we, uh, this is a factor, this proves that our guess is correct, given that we have in, enough initial terms, and this is checked easily, so this is easy. And actually, what is very impressive in Maple, uh, so in the system I'm using, uh, is that we could actually also do even faster. We could factor the differential operator of degree 4, uh, which itself is a highly non-trivial task. But this is implemented uh, efficiently in Maple. And indeed, here we find the right factor uh, we also had before. So this, in this case, works as well. Uh, yes, and here I just display the differential equation uh, for the sequence, uh, uh, for the generating function of the sequence an again. OK, so let me come back to the presentation. So this was for the guessing. Uh, and here uh, I show you, but maybe I will skip this maybe for later, uh, just a, a fast uh, or short summary of how to prove that uh, a generating function or a definite function is algebraic using guess and proof. So in short, the trick is the same. We just guess a minimal polynomial. In this case, it's here from the first few terms. Uh, and then uh, we apply uh, the effective version of Abel's theorem, saying this, if we have an algebraic uh, power series given by some minimal polynomial, then we also have a differential equation. and this differential equations agree, 
usually, or if they're not, we can decide that they uh, uh, annihilate the, both the same power series we wanted, and this is a proof. Um, but as I already mentioned, the degree uh, of this minimal polynomial can be arbitrarily high. And here I have uh, an example one should always have in mind. So this is the differential equation of the nth root of 1 plus x. And uh, the minimal polynomial has a degree n, uh, even though the differential equation is of order 1. So this approach works very well in practice often, but not always. And uh, as we will see in a few slides, the, uh, the algebraicity degree of our generating functions of a n and b n have uh, degree 120. Or it is, yes, and uh, this is too big for this uh, approach to work. Okay, so now let me come to the main messages uh, I had uh, in the beginning or in the middle in my main problem is how to uh, test or conjecture how to quantify and then how to prove that some g finite functions are algebraic. And for the conjecturing part, we will use a conjecture, we will use the Groth and Dick-Katz uh, conjecture about um, uh, algebraic solutions of differential equations. Uh, in short, uh, if we have a differential equation or an operator, we can always convert it into a system. This is by, just by taking uh, the co companion matrix of L. And uh, so we find s such a system. And then uh, in the conjecture, uh, we define the p-curvature like this. So. Uh, the p curvature of such a system is the matrix A p of uh, x, where A zero is just the identity matrix, and then we have this uh, recurrence relation. So A one will be just A of x, and then we need to apply uh, this uh, recurrence relation. And uh, this is just a remark that actually for a solution vector y we have this identity. And now the conjecture says the following. If uh, or all solutions of our initial uh, problem are algebraic, if and only if, for almost all primes p, the p curvature mod p vanishes. So this is open, even for uh, all, uh, differential equations of uh, order 2. Uh, but this is a very uh, strong uh, uh, statement, uh, say, uh, meaning that uh, I have it here. If uh, we find that the p curvature mod p vanishes for many primes p, uh, uh, then it is safe to conjecture, so to say, that the solutions will be algebraic. So generically, there is absolutely no reason uh, for this to vanish for uh, primes p if uh, we have no algebraic uh, so basis of solutions. All. Uh, all but finitely many. Almost all. Yes, all but finitely many. Oh. Yes, so actually we, the, the, the reason for this, or one reason for all, almost all is because A of x can have denominators, so we cannot even reduce it modulo or some primes. But uh, because it's, if, uh, it has rational functions, we can reduce it almost all, always. Uh, and in fact, uh, this uh, p curvature mod p, so a p mod p, can be computed efficiently. Uh, this is also something very nice. So what we can do in practice is we just compute uh, these matrices, and uh, we, if we find zero for uh, large strip of primes or almost all primes we, check, we checked, uh, then we will conjecture that this algebraic. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. Uh, the fast algorithm I just mentioned, uh, I will actually not even use. Uh, what uh, is an uh, easy trick uh, to, to compute the p curvature is, uh, is the following. So as I mentioned in a remark that this equality holds. And uh, so if we consider the uh, right Euclidean division of uh, our operator del, or of any operator del to the k, for some k, uh, by L, then we find something like this with uh, uh, polynomials, uh, or no, with rational functions uh, dm minus 1 of x until d0 of x. And uh, because of this identity, 
uh, and just applying this to, uh, to a solution y, it follows that the first row of our p curvature matrix is actually this polynomial. So we can, what we can do uh, is we can compute uh, the right Euclidean division of uh, this operator by L on, uh, on the computer and then reduce mod p. So let me show you uh, this for our uh, operator of, for the sequence A. Um, so uh, this is the operator of uh, order two I showed you here above. And uh, here you see that what I do is I compute the right division uh, of the operator del, so this is written as dx, uh, to the power of three, uh, divided by the operator. And we find uh, the quotient, this is this part. And in here we find the reminder. So uh, uh, as these are this, these rational functions d1 and d0 on the slide before. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are only interested in the reminders on so the rational functions. And we are interested in them mod p, which is the, pri uh, which is the power of dx. And so we find zero in this case. So uh, if we, in other words, the, P, uh, the three curvature, the P curvature for P equals three, uh, mod three is zero. And uh, what I do here is I just compute the P curvatures for uh, the prime seven, 11, and so on, uh, for the first, uh, for, not for the first, but for 10 primes. And if I see something like this, if I see only zeros, then I already conjecture that the solutions will be algebraic. Okay, so this was about um, testing algebraicity. And uh, now let me come to quantifying. Um, I already mentioned that uh, in some uh, half sentence that uh, we expect the uh, generating functions of being of algebraicity degree 120. And now let me explain how to find this number. Uh, again, this is uh, this will not give a proof, but a very strong indication. So here I sh shortly recall the monodromy uh, group. Uh, I'm sure everybody already knows this. So if we have uh, such a differential equation of order n, we have n uh, solutions, which are linearly independent. And uh, what we can do is we can analytically continue them along some loops. And if we have singularities inside the loops, uh, then we will find uh, possibly a different set of solutions. And therefore, there exists uh, an invertible matrix uh, transforming uh, the old solutions, so to say, to the new ones. Uh, and this matrix is then defined a monodromy group. So this is a very uh, short introduction to the monodromy. And uh, here is a, a theorem which we will use uh, for uh, quantifying algebraicity. It says the following, uh, a solution of uh, this differential uh, equation. So if f is a solution of this differential equation, and here actually I need L to be Fuchsian, which is uh, in practice the case, but uh, I will drop this for the moment. Uh, and then the algebraicity degree of f is equal to the cardinality of the orbit of f under the action of m. Uh, this is a very classical theorem. And uh, what uh, we will use in this case is that the analytic continuation of definite functions can be Effect, effective, uh, very efficiently uh, performed uh, on the computer. And uh, this is a result uh, due to Chudnovsky, actually, uh, where, who used binary splitting and other tricks, and uh, also improved by other, uh, other scientists, uh, and uh, also implemented in SageMev. And uh, this is what I will show now. So um, yes, what we will do, now is we will compute the analytic continuation of the solutions of our operators and uh, then uh, compute the orbit. So as I mentioned, this will be done numerically, uh, uh, but uh, we can do it to arbitrarily precision and uh, very efficiently. Again, let me zoom on this. Is this big enough? Okay. So. Uh, here the procedure works as follows. So we have this um, uh, package called OR algebra in SageMev, uh, which allows to do these computations efficiently. Uh, so here I just uh, define the, the OR algebra. 
uh, we work in. And uh, this is the differential operator from before. Let me print it nicely. And um, so first, uh, we can find the local basis of solution at zero. Uh, we can find the power series solution. This is exactly, as maybe you remember, the numbers a n we had before. So these are, this is the only power series solution of uh, our uh, operator. And uh, before I uh, continue, I will do this substitution uh, where I divide x by 1800 uh, so that uh, the numbers become a bit more uh, nicer. So uh, this is the same operator but uh, shifted by this substitution in order that to see that the, um, uh, the singularities of this operator, which are the, uh, the zeros of uh, this uh, polynomial uh, are, are zero, the solution here and the root of this uh, polynomial, which are now, let me show them here, uh, which are now much, so to say, easier or uh, not, not too tiny or too large. Uh, and uh, here now I define the, uh, the paths of analytic continuation. So we have our solution at zero, and what we will do, we will run, run around zero one time. So this gives one matrix of analytic continuation. Uh, we will, so because zero was a singularity, another singularity uh, was around minus 0 0.4. So therefore we define the second path of analytic continuation to be like this. And finally, the third zero was around minus 50. So we can define a path going around all this singularities. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm skipping a bit of details here, but this is the main uh, trick. And uh, now if we define the number of bits uh, to be 20, then we can compute the following. So here I computed the numerical transition matrices uh, along the three paths we just defined. So, and the transition matrices look like this. And this is already, so uh, what I want to say here is that uh, this computation is uh, rigorous in the sense that we have uh, rigorous bounds. So this uh, says that uh, M0, which is uh, the analytic continuation around um, the origin, uh, the matrix has these coefficients where we have one and then a rigorous bound of, of this number. So. Uh, 10 to the minus 9, uh, yes. And so we have these matrices. And uh, by because we will be only interested in numerical uh, computations, we can also uh, transform them then just in floating point and not uh, counting with rigorous precision. Sorry, sorry. Yes. Is it uh, the code uh, related to the code of uh, Martin Zaroba or is it something else? Uh, yes, yeah, so sorry. Uh, this this numerical transition matrix is by Mark. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and uh, as I mentioned, so this is done uh, in a highly uh, efficient uh, manner. Uh, a similar uh, uh, implementation also exists in Maple, uh, but uh, the implementation here is even more efficient than there, yes. So what I can do here is I can define it uh, even, let's say, 800 bits, which is uh, around 240 decimal places. So this takes uh, a bit of time. Uh, actually, if I <laughs> improve, uh, it is faster. So uh, and uh, as I mentioned, so th these are now the numerical transition matrices. So the matrices corresponding to the analytic continuation with uh, uh, high precision uh, of 240 decimal places. And uh, what we do here is now uh, a very uh, non-efficient written code. But uh, uh, so we start with a solution we, we have. So these are the, uh, the basis of solutions. And so we start with the vector 1, 0 corresponding to the power series solution. And then we multiply this vector by the matrices uh, we find in, in this um, 
uh, in this group. So we, we compute you know, numerically the, the orbit of this vector. And uh, after a fraction of a second, we find the number 120 of different vectors uh, by just multiplying with this matrices. And uh, this gives a numerical there's an indication uh, that uh, the algebraicity degree will be 120. OK, let me continue. Uh, now let me come maybe to the most exciting part, uh, the, uh, the proving part, uh, proving that uh, this system really has a basis of algebraic solutions. And for this, uh, we will first use a, a, so to say a direct or naive approach with differential Galois theory and then a more clever way. So uh, let me now give a very brief introduction to differential Galois theory. So again, we can transform this uh, operator to a system. And uh, this system has, a, uh, has n solutions, as I mentioned, in some uh, so-called PKVCO extension. So an extension of our field uh, K uh, by some fundamental solution matrix. And the dif differential Galois group is defined in an analogous way as the usual Galois group uh, as the field of automorphisms of K, and in this case, uh, which commute with the der derivation, and as usual, leave all elements of K invariant, so just like here. And uh, uh, so the group is a linear algebraic subgroup of GLN, and this will be very important in, on the next slide. But uh, already here, a quite classical theorem says that uh, so G uh, stabilizes the ideal of differential relations between the solutions, and uh, more precisely, or uh, in a special case, if uh, we have a basis of algebraic solutions, uh, G will be finite, and uh, also the opposite. So, uh, computing this differential group uh, tells us everything, everything about the algebraicity of solutions. Uh, but here is a problem, and namely that in practice this group is very difficult to compute. So there is an implement or there is an algorithm, but it is uh, very um, technical and, uh, to my knowledge, not not even implemented due to uh, these reasons. And uh, yeah, so it's a very uh, difficult task to compute G. Uh, but what we will do is the following. Uh, so as I mentioned. Uh, if we have a differential Galois group, uh, we have uh, it is an algebraic group, so we can look at the uh, Lie algebra of this group, and um, th this uh, Lie algebra also contains enough information uh, for uh, for uh, our purposes. So, namely, uh, the the dimension of uh, this uh, Lie algebra. Uh, is given by the transcendence degree of uh, our extension. In other words, if the extension is algebraic, uh, so the transcendence degree is zero, we need to have a, a Lie algebra which is zero. So this is the main point. And now the point is that computing the, uh, the Lie algebra is easier, or much easier in, in, in this case, or in, in practice. Uh, and uh, here I summarize in short the idea. Um, uh, the idea is to compute uh, symmetric powers of L, which also have enough information, and then finding rational solutions of the symmetric powers. So this uh, rational solutions we know how to find. This is classical. And uh, if we find some uh, rational solutions in symmetric powers, they give us enough in or information about the uh, Galois Lie algebra itself. And uh, this is then reduced to solving a linear system. So this is somehow the main point. So again, we reduce something, or in this case, we reduce something to finding rational solutions and then solving a linear system. Sergei, sorry. Yes. Uh, why do we need the, the singular uh, work of, uh, that you mentioned before if we have this? Isn't it solving the problem of singular, this, uh, this theorem and this approach? Uh, yes, but it's very new. But yes, it, uh, so using this, we can compute uh, the differential Lie algebra. And uh, yes, so, but 
ah, maybe, yes, uh, one important point is that this is about all solutions of, to a differential uh, operator. So what extra step you need is to find now if you have if one uh, uh, given uh, definite function uh, with some differential operator, you don't know that this is the minimal one. Yes, you want that the, the route that you follow is algebraic, yes. not the other ones. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And there, therefore, also on the other slide, I mentioned Singer 2014. So this is yeah. okay. So here I have an example of uh, how this works on this toy example I mentioned before. Before the, I did, I, I want to ask how much time do I have still? Five minutes. Five minutes, okay. So then I will be here very fast. So we have this differential operator and we want to investigate or to prove that all solutions are algebraic. And in this case, uh, we will look at the uh, symmetric, uh, symmetric square. So this, in this simple case, it is enough. And the symmetric uh, square of the system is given uh, by this matrix. So, uh, and here, this uh, the differential uh, system of uh, y prime equals this matrix times y has rational solutions, which we can find easily. And uh, therefore, uh, we can conclude by this simple argument. Uh, so, if we have a matrix in uh, the Lie algebra associated to this uh, symmetric square, uh, then uh, m applied to the solutions need to be zero. And m also comes from a symmetric uh, square. So uh, this is some property we use here. So in other words, because it comes from a symmetric square, it satisfies something like this. And because applied to uh, this rational functions, it is zero, it satisfies something like this. But here we already see that uh, we have uh, only four variables, uh, uh, the m's, but we have more equations. And indeed, the, just solving this form m proves that the only solution is uh, the zero vector, and hence uh, proves that uh, this uh, m has to be zero, and therefore all solutions are algebraic. This is somehow the, the trick. And uh, so here, uh, I want to mention that for the known case, for Dubrovin and Young, for the D, uh, we need to go to the uh, fifth symmetric power. Therefore, then we find a 56 by 56 uh, system uh, of which we can find rational solutions. And indeed, there are then two rational solutions of the system. Uh, and uh, then setting up the corresponding system, like in this toy example we had before, and solving it uh, proves that there are no non-zero solutions. And therefore, the all solutions of L uh, B are algebraic, and also for the for the other case of the sequence A n, uh, the same method works. Uh, here we need to go to the twentieth symmetric power, but uh, the operator is just of order two, so we can do this. And this system is actually smaller, so this is even faster. And uh, yeah, solving this uh, uh, system is also very fast, and we find only algebraic solutions. So uh, I wanted to show you this in Maple, but maybe I will skip this, uh, maybe for the questions. Uh, I will rather show you uh, the problem. So again, the problem I had on my second slide, uh, finding the pairs and such that the sequence where C is defined as before is uh, an integer sequence. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, these numbers have been found before. But by just numerically trying other pairs, we were, we were able to find, indeed, other cases uh, where the solutions or the generating functions seem to be algebraic. So just applying the same uh, ideas I showed you before, the grotten Descartes conjecture and then the uh, numerics, computation and SAGE, uh, we can a conjecture that this have um, algebraic generating functions and that uh, even guess the algebraicity degree, which as you see is then much bigger than in the small cases. And the proof I just showed you works for a n and b n and also for c n, but for this cases, so this is somehow the limitation of even this approach, uh, then the systems we need to solve is too large. And this is somehow still work in progress. Uh, and now I can already conclude.
so in summary, uh, both generating functions of a n and b n are algebraic, and so they are particular periods, and this resolves somehow the mystery uh, we had before. Uh, then the guess. Oh, sorry. Oops. The guess of proof approach, uh, um, as I showed you, it's uh, often very useful, but uh, it fails also sometimes because the system, uh, the problem gets too large. Uh, and then I had these three uh, main uh, messages, so to say, that the Grot and Decatz conjecture allows sufficient conjecturing or testing that the definite function is algebraic numerical computations, for example, in Sage about with the monodromy group allow uh, quantifying the conjecture uh, stated up here. And finally, uh, differential Galois theory or applied methods like uh, finding or computing the Lie algebra uh, really allows proving that uh, definite function is algebraic. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I have a remark, sorry, it's Maxim Ansevich, sorry, I'm not here. Uh, uh, to check uh, this incredibly cast conjecture, it's not really any algorithm. One can just uh, have your base of solutions of any given point at zero, yeah? And just check the denominators uh, don't contain large primes. That's, that's much easier. You just calculate thousand solutions up to thousand degree because of recursion can do it and numbers are going the number of digits goes linearly mm -hmm. and then we just check denominators yes mm -hmm. it's actually stronger than picker which uh, vanishes but uh, it follows from the raised cases yeah but uh, how can you know that there are no small primes after that. Well, you don't know. No, no. If you change, uh, you calculate thousand numbers, and you change the uh, prime numbers up very small, and that's it. Interesting. Sorry, I, I don't quite uh, get the point. So you, you say that calculating. No, 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 you, don't have to, you need some algorithm to calculate the curvature at all. I have to say. You just have a basis of solutions at your point, yes. maybe fractional powers, and, and check that, let's say, first, uh, consider denominators of first thousand coefficients, and check that there's no large primes. That's it. And this is equivalent of uh, the. Uh, it's, it's, more uh, stronger, it, it's more stronger than the importance of the curvature, but follows from the tracing. For, for, for practical reasons, it's, that's what you have to check. It's called Eisenstein's theorem, right? Yes, uh, this, but uh, this is not strong, or is it, is it proven for vanishing of the P curvature? Or to be yeah, proven? It implies vanishing of the P curvature immediately, yeah. If there are no large primes for all the coefficients? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, so after the scaling, you get into the numbers. So, so it is quite striking that with such a small uh, order of differential equation, you get such a huge algebraic degree. Um, so it is kind of raising the question, is it possible to have a kind of simpler expression in terms of basic breaks, which could be algebraic, you know, like composition of algebraic functions, or perhaps uh, an algebraic expression in terms of uh, hypergeometric function, which then leads to this big degree? So in, in the case of an, indeed, this is what happens. Uh, so this, we, this I have on a bonus slide. We could prove, actually, that an. Uh, so no, this, uh, so we have hypergeometric functions with some pullback. Uh, and uh, linear combination of them gives uh, the generating functions of an in this case. Um, and these hypergeometric functions, they come from, uh, uh, there is a classification of them. And um, uh, yes, so and the degrees of those are 
are well understood. And you have but in the case of uh, all the three cases of our no, so this works because the differential equation is of degree of order two, uh, and for a n and for the others uh, we don't know. So we, we don't know whether this happens. So I, I sorry, I, I have a remark to uh, Maxim's remark. Uh, so uh, for example, if you take a uh, transcendent diff uh, d uh, d finite function, for example, the differential function, uh, the the um, uh, d finite function of the upper e numbers, then you ha don't have any um, uh, denominators at all, but it is still transcendent. So this is somehow weaker. Yeah, yes. Ah, yes. Yes. So if you if you do it for all solutions, this is. Uh, called the Bezevenos conjecture, actually. So this is, I think, from 91. And it says that if you have a basis of solutions and all of the solutions are globally bounded, uh, then uh, they are algebraic. Uh, yes, but this is, this is known to be, this no, is known to follow from uh, Grothe and Dikant's conjecture, but there is no equivalence. No, no, it's, it's not just, it's a bit stronger. It's, it's implies the importance of the curvature. Yes, the, the conjecture is weaker, yes. And they, therefore, the, the claim is stronger, yeah. yes. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was a similar remark in the chat by uh, Jacques Arthur. Ah. ah, yes, I did not see the chat. But... Yeah, so you, you need all solutions. Thank you again. Thank you.